Hi and welcome back. In this video we are again going to investigate a special class of games and that is going to be a subcase of the matrix games. Um, the section is called symmetric matrix games. I'll give you the definition right away. The idea here is that a special class of matrix games makes it particularly easy to compute a pair of optimal strategies or a Nash equilibrium. You've seen that you can do this for all matrix games by solving two linear programming problems. But for the symmetric matrix games, things are even a little easier. Now let's define first what a matrix game is, uh, what a symmetric matrix game is. That is characterized by the payoff matrix being skew symmetric. So a matrix game with, we need one more thing, we need a quadratic payoff matrix, of course. That is then in R to the N by N. And it's called symmetric if A is skew symmetric. So please do not confuse this. The payoff matrix being symmetric does not mean the game is symmetric. Instead, the payoff matrix has to be skew symmetric, and you'll surely remember what that was. Skew symmetric means the transpose of A is equal to the negative of A. Now what that does that help us? Let's have a look at the corresponding theorem. Why is a skew symmetric payoff matrix easier? Well, for a symmetric matrix game, with payoff matrix A in R to the N by N. The following holds. The first claim is X transposed A times X is always zero. For all strategies X in SC, and of course SC is the same as SR. So if the matrix, matrix has the same number of rows and columns, then those two sets of strategies are the same. And if you use the same strategy on both sides, then the expected payoff will always be zero. Now, what does that mean? That means, of course, every player has the ability forcing the payoff to zero. So that means the value of the game will be zero. So in other words, the game is fair. So if you have a game specified by a skew symmetric payoff matrix, then you don't have to do any computations. You know right away that the game is going to be fair, the value is going to be zero. And of course that makes the LPs a little easier because you know new and you know new already beforehand. And that also means basically the objective function is fixed, that's always zero. You only have to find feasible strategies for that to work. And that's the third point here that says if X is in SC with AX is greater or equal to zero, then that means X is a feasible strategy. And that will then solve 
at least the first linear programming problem. The second one is practically the same because of that skew symmetricity. And that means it will, also, it will also solve the second LP programming problem. So the pair XX is a pair of optimal strategies. Then the pair XX in SC and SR is a pair of optimal strategies and thus also a Nash equilibrium. So that's the value of these um, symmetric games. It makes the analysis a little easier because you only need to find a feasible strategy and you know what the value of the game is without even doing any computations. You only have to state that the payoff matrix is skew symmetric. Remember, skew symmetric, not symmetric, skew symmetric. Now, to show you how this works, let's have a quick look at an example. And you notice that is similar to the problem we've seen before. We've seen parity before. That was not quite a symmetric game because the matrix is not skew symmetric. Um, but this one is, and that is rock, paper, scissors. Now I'm guessing you're all familiar with rock, paper, scissors. So um, let me define that in terms of the payoff matrix right away. In rock, paper, scissors, both players have three strategies and they are called rock, paper, and scissors. I'll abbreviate those by R, P, and S, rock, paper, scissors. And the rules are the following. If the two players choose the same strategy, so they all play rock, they all play paper, or they all play scissors, then there is no payoff. No one wins, it's a draw. So there's a zero here on the diagonal. Now, let's start with the row player. If the row player plays rock, one player plays rock, and the other plays paper, then paper covers rock. That means paper wins. So if Rao plays rock and Cullen plays paper, over here, then paper wins, so the payoff is one for a column player. On the other hand, if Rao plays paper and Cullen plays rock, then the row player wins, so the payoff for the column player is minus one. So there's a minus one here. If uh, row plays rock and column plays scissors, then rock crushes scissors. So Rock wins, and that means the payoff for the column player in this situation is minus one. The row player gets the payoff. And vice versa, um, if column plays rock and row plays scissors, then the column player wins, and that means there's a payoff of one. And finally, we have two missing. If row plays paper and column plays scissors, and scissors cuts paper, so scissors wins this situation. There's a payment of one. And vice versa, if Rao plays scissors and column plays paper, then the column player wins. So here we have a payoff of minus one. So that's the payoff matrix for Rao paper scissors. And you can easily see that if you compute A transposed, that's zero minus one, 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 zero minus one, minus one, one, zero. And if you compare that to A, you will see that these entries here, those are not the same, but they are inverses of each other. So this is exactly minus A, and that means A is skew symmetric. And by definition, that means rock, paper, scissors 
is a symmetric game. Now, according to the theorem, we know the value is zero. So it's not biased in favor of any player. And we also know any strategy with a x greater or equal to zero is optimal. So we only need to find a strategy that has this property. So let's write down a again. a is um, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 1, and 1, minus 1, 0, times x1, x2, x3. That needs to be greater or equal to 0. And that translates into three inequalities. The first one is x2 minus x3 is greater or equal to 0. Then we have minus x1 plus x3 is greater or equal to 0. And finally, x1 minus x2 is greater or equal to 0. And these can be translated into inequalities of this kind here, x2 greater or equal to x3. Here we get x3 is greater or equal to x1, and here we get x1 is greater or equal to x2. So we just need to find an x with this property here. And similarly, as we've seen before, we can try to put all of these inequalities in one chain, and then hopefully get a result from that. And we'll, we'll try to do just that. We'll start with x1. So here's an inequality that starts with x1. Let's try that first. So x1 is greater or equal to x2. Now let's continue with uh, x2. Here's one that continues with x2. x2 is greater or equal to x3. So that's, that's the green one here. And finally, there's one left. This one here x3 is greater or equal to x1, so we'll continue with this one. That's the last inequality. And the chain starts and ends with x1. And of course x1 is equal to x1. So what that means is x1 is equal to x2 and 2x3 as well, because those are bounded between x1 and x1, so they can only all be equal. And together with x1 plus x2 plus x3 being 1 and x1, x2, x3 being non-negative, because remember x is a strategy vector, that implies all the x's are equal and they are all 1 over 3. So this vector here, 1 over 3, 1, 1, 1 is optimal. So what we get from this analysis is in rock, paper, scissors, it's best to choose a strategy randomly and with equal probability for all three strategies. There is no one best strategy in rock, paper, scissors. And of course that is why the game is fair in the end. Okay, so here's your best strategy for rock, paper, scissors. Um, in the exercises, you'll analyze some more complex scenarios, some variations of rock, paper, scissors, where we'll look into other strategies um, and what the optimal way to play these games will then be. Now this completes our, um, our treatment of game theory with that special case of symmetric games. We'll conclude that application. And in the following videos, we're going to go back to have a look at vector spaces and equip those with more special properties um, to do more interesting computations in vector spaces. And I hope I'll see you then.